welcome to another video. I recently had a very eventful weekend. In this video, I thought I'd share some of the behind the scenes prepping for a local art pop-up, as well as some snippets from two other art markets I attended. So I don't do art markets very often, I don't keep a lot of product in stock, so I really had to kick it into high gear to get ready for this event. It's a small event, but I wanted to make a good showing and also just improve on my display from the year before. So here was my pretty sizable to-do list leading up to the art hop. I really wanted to challenge myself to create some new art for the event, so I worked on some new greeting card designs, which you'll have seen in the previous video. That took up a lot of my time, and everything else on the list basically happened in the day or two before the event, so it was a really busy couple of days. Here I'm packaging some prints. This is my Girls with Attitude series. I really wanted to offer some mini prints this time around. The previous art hop, I only had greeting cards that I priced at $5, and then prints that were 11 by 14 that I priced at $20. So I thought it'd be good to have a wider range of sizes and price points this time. I printed up a pretty small batch of these since it was my first time offering them as prints and I wanted to see how well they did. I don't know what possessed me but I decided to bring along some zines just for the heck of it. I hadn't printed any zines in a very long time and it turns out I kind of forgot how to do it, so it took a good half hour of just futzing with the print settings in InDesign to get it to print properly. When you print a booklet, you have to rearrange the pages so that when it's all folded and bound, it's in the right reading order. So for example, page 1 and 32 need to be on the same spread. InDesign has a function called print booklet that does the imposition for you, but for some reason, I still find it confusing every time, and it always feels like a bit of a miracle when it actually prints correctly. When I told my friend I was making zines, she asked me what zines were, so I thought I'd do a little show and tell here. These are some zines from my personal collection. Zines are essentially self-published booklets that are usually made using inexpensive reproduction methods like photocopier or rezo printing. They can contain anything from short stories and comics to poetry and art. My zine is a collection of comic strips from my webcomic, Comics by Alice. I always meant to come up with a better name for this webcomic, but now that name has kind of stuck. 
The comics are based on my experiences as an artist and chronically depressed person, so read at your own risk. I realized that over time I've collected a lot of specialty tools like this long arm stapler. It definitely makes the job easier, but you can also staple your zine together with a regular stapler that opens flat and just staple onto a piece of cardboard, or I've even used an eraser. After I trimmed the first one, I realized that I forgot to account for the thickness of the paper. So towards the middle, the page numbers are getting perilously close to the edge of the page. I fixed this by increasing the creep value in InDesign and also just moving the page numbers closer to the center to give me more buffer. I was originally planning to buy a greeting card display, but they are surprisingly expensive and I am, if nothing else, cheap. So I was off to the Home Depot to buy some wood to make my own poor man's version. I bought a 2x4 foot piece of plywood to use as a backing board and some wood trim to make the shelves. I had the board cut into two pieces, intending to use the smaller piece to make the card display. I honestly didn't have a plan for the larger piece, but you'll see a little bit later how I ended up using that. I'm cutting the trim using this little Japanese handsaw that I bought a few years ago when I decided to try making picture frames. I think I made one frame before coming to the realization that it really wasn't worth the hassle. And here is my finished display on the day of the event. It's pretty simple, but overall I was pretty happy with it. It was definitely a step up from my display the year before, so that's a win in my book. 
Here are some of the other artists that I was showing with. Please check them out. I will leave links to their socials in the description. Thank you so much to everyone who came by and made it an awesome day. I was really touched to see so many friends and art lovers come visit us. I spent the rest of that day recovering and then on Sunday I went to Fremont to visit a different art fair. Sunday is when Fremont holds their weekly street market, which I hadn't been to in about five years. <laughs> It's a bit crazy how long it's been. I blame the pandemic, the closure of the West Seattle Bridge, and depression that kept me mostly housebound the last few years. The street market has gotten way more hipster since the last time I visited. Not that I'm complaining. Fremont has always been known as the quirky, artistic neighborhood of Seattle. Their claims to fame include having the largest statue of Lenin in the US, as well as having lots of art installations everywhere. It reminds me a lot of my college town, and I always enjoy coming here. Then I went over to the Small Art Mart, a pop-up that was happening at a plant shop named, very appropriately, Peace, Happiness, and Love. It was a really cool venue for an art pop-up with artists kind of hidden among the plants. Here are some of the things that I got. If you came and supported me at the art hop, please know that your money went to a good cause. I paid it forward and spent it on other people's art. After spending all of my money, I went for a nice walk along the canal and just sat for a while feeling the sun, listening to birds, and feeling so freaking lucky.